I asked you guys on Instagram what type of recipe you wanted to see and a majority of you said recipes from my latest cookbook, Zoet Deeg. So today we are making the red velvet cake. Um, back in the day you didn't actually need to use food coloring for your red velvet cake. It was the chemical reaction of your cocoa and your buttermilk that causes the cake to turn red. But these days cocoa is um, processed differently, so that doesn't work anymore. So if you want a red velvet, you need to use some food coloring. Uh, some people just leave out the food coloring and that's fine as well. You'll get a more brown cake. It's actually just like a chocolate cocoa cake, um, but then it's turned red. The red doesn't do anything for the flavor, it just looks decadent, I guess. <laughs> red velvet is actually a very simple cake to make. Um, I am deviating a little bit from my book because I'm using 23 centimeter cake tins and now I want a slightly smaller but higher cake so I'm using 20 centimeter cake tins. At first I'm going to uh, preheat the oven. If you don't have a separate thermometer in your oven or if you're not sure about temperature always go a little bit lower because if you put your cake in at a too high of a temperature then you'll get one of those domes and then you need to cut that off and that's just a waste of your cake. So if you put your cake in at a lower temperature it'll bake more evenly and it doesn't rise in the, in the center. So I only have one of my 20 centimeter cake tin so I need to weigh all of my um, ingredients so that I know how much it is in total and I can separate divide it by three. So my bowl is 713 grams. I can now add all of my ingredients and then at the end I'll subtract the 730 grams so I know how much it is in total and divide that by three. The reason I do this is because I start, if I start out at zero right now and my scale goes out in the meantime or uh, something happens then I don't know how much my bowl weighs and I don't know what the amount is of just the ingredients. We're starting out with butter. And then our sugar. I'll put the quantities in the description box below. You need to cream this. And with creaming your butter and sugar, I mean, it really needs to be soft and fluffy and it can take up to a couple of minutes. Now we add in our eggs. All of the ingredients are at room temperature. That's important because if there is a temperature difference between your ingredients, then everything can separate. Um, add in your eggs one by one and mix until it's incorporated. If you add your eggs too fast, it can separate as well. It's not the end of the world, but um, just keep in mind that if you have separated cake batter, that is what causes it. And now we have this beautiful, smooth, creamy butter, egg and sugar mixture. If your butter and sugar and eggs have separated, uh, just add in a couple of tablespoons of flour because that will stabilize the mixture again. We are now continuing with um, the sunflower oil, the buttermilk and the vinegar. So I'm just going to pour it in while my uh, kitchen aid is mixing. I'm now also going to add my vanilla extract. I made this one myself. Just a teaspoon. And my um, red food coloring. With baking, I always recommend using a gel food coloring. Um, just because it's thicker, it's stronger, you don't need as much, so it doesn't interrupt with all of the rest of the ingredients. I say in my recipe about six grams, but it really depends on the strength of your food coloring. So I'm just going to add um, the six grams and see how red it turns out. And be careful because if you get this anywhere, it's not going out. Our cake is red. 
it's very red um, but it's still very loose batter so I'm going to show you the end result in a bit we are now going to put in our dry mixture so our flour cocoa powder um, baking powder and um, baking soda the difference between a baking soda and a baking powder is baking powder already has a little bit of an acidity added to it if you use baking soda you need acidity added to your batter so we added buttermilk that's the acidity that activates baking soda if you don't have acidity in your batter and you use baking soda it does nothing so I'm going to use a combination of baking powder and baking soda. That's because baking soda is much stronger than baking powder. So if you wanted to use enough leavening agent, then you needed to use a lot of baking powder and that can alter the taste of your cake. So I'm going to add everything to my flour here and then whisk it all together to make sure everything is mixed well because we now want to mix the batter as little as we can because mixing your batter once the the flour is in can cr create gluten and you don't want gluten in your cake because that'll make the cake more um, chewy instead of nice and soft so mix this I'm going to just add it all at once like so and then we'll mix until everything is just combined and no more perfect go back in with your spatula and just um, mix everything one more time to make sure everything at the bottom is mixed as well and the sides and everything is incorporated nicely Let's weigh it out again. It's 2054 minus 713. There we go again with the math. Uh, 20 minus 7 is 13. So 1340 is our ingredients divided by three, four, 440, 1340, wait, yeah, 440-ish, great, okay, I'm um, going to do that math on my phone just to be sure, <laughs> Forty-seven. I'm not that bad. I've put some butter on a piece of kitchen paper. I'm going to just grease my baking tin. Put it on my scale. Now that it's zero, so fourteen forty. 440. I have my pellet knife, so I'm just going to spread it out evenly. that is it first one is ready to go into the oven and after this uh, one is baked then we'll get it out let it cool off and then repeat three times so I'll see you in a bit so it's frosting time and I absolutely love a cream cheese frosting I love it so much more than just a buttercream frosting because of the tanginess of the cream cheese but it's very important which brand of cream cheese you use because you need one that has low moisture 
The powdered sugar draws out moisture from the cream cheese, so if there's a lot of moisture in there, then you, you'll get a runny uh, frosting. What we can do, and this is another deviation from the cookbook, is we'll cream the butter with our um, powdered sugar first. This way the powdered sugar is covered by the butter, the fat of the butter, and it doesn't draw out the moisture of the cream cheese as much, minimizing the risk of a runny frosting. I'm going to um, add in the sugar bit by bit because otherwise you'll just have this big explosion of powdered sugar while, when I put on my um, KitchenAid. Okay, let's go. I made some extra frosting because I wanted to try something out in a bit um, but normally I would do one fourth one fourth between the layers and then you'll have the half remaining for the top and the sides The easiest thing to do, by the way, is get your frosting in a piping bag and then pipe around it. But I don't want to get a piping bag. <laughs> I don't know, this has something therapeutic for me as well. That is pretty much it. You can set it in the fridge now. Let it set. If you don't like your cake to be cold, um, take off a slice and let it come to room temperature for 30 minutes before you eat it. Like I said, addictive. I am going to put this in the fridge. And then I'm going to see if I can maybe add some um, food coloring to the rest of my buttercream frosting to make some like flower type design on my cake. But if it works, I'll show you the picture. If it didn't, forget I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> 